Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here bringing you another entry for the episode recap and thoughts category. This video will be dedicated to the B segment of episode 18 of Codename Kids Next Door, Operation Oompa. We begin this segment in number one's room in the Sector B treehouse and we see an alarm clock go off at 5 o'clock in the morning. Number One wastes no time in activating a one-person spacecraft to launch himself into space. Number One sighs in relief once the spacecraft enters uh, space, but then suddenly a malfunctioning error happens to the spacecraft. Number One pleads with the spacecraft not to malfunction now because someone is waiting for him apparently. But it's no use. The spacecraft uh, malfunctions and it crashes back down to the Uno house. More specifically, it crashes through the garage and into uh, the car. Or yeah, the spacecraft is now on top of the car in the garage. And number one is now sitting next to his dad, who comments that number one is right on time for them to go fishing. It turns out Mr. Uno had read in the newspaper, yeah, there's an article in the newspaper called the Dad's Do's and Don'ts section, and according to this newspaper article, um, fathers and sons uh, spend quality time together by going fishing, and Mr. Uno was hoping to do that with Nigel, number one. Number one, though, tries to get out of it saying that he has important kids next door missions to fulfill. But Mr. Uno responds that um, that bonding with uh, that yeah father and son bonding time is today's kids next door mission. That's what Mr. Uno says. So Mr. Uno starts up the car and the father son Uno duo head off to go fishing somewhere. So we see the car is on the road right now, and some other drivers go around Mr. Uno and complain about uh, him driving slowly but Mr. Uno thinks that everyone else is driving recklessly. But Mr. Uno also thinks that some music will lighten the mood, so he turns on some music in the car and number one comments how he hates the tuba. This causes Mr. Uno to stop the car, and a scene plays out along these lines. Uh, these aren't his exact words, I'm just paraphrasing, but uh, Mr. Uno says something along the lines of, I hate the tuba too, son, but this sousaphone music is great. So that becomes a running gag in the segment. Number one keeps saying tuba. Mr. Uno keeps clarifying sousaphone. So yeah, that's the uh, running gag of the segment, but I digress. So eventually, we see the Uno duo have arrived at a lake to go fishing at, and they're in a boat now. We also see several other boats that have father-son duos as well that decide to go fishing as well. There's also a really large cliff near this particular lake. Now, um, Mr. Uno is trying to figure out how to use a fishing rod, and number one is just um, stewing in his juices, so to speak. He's just frustrated about the whole thing. At one point, number one even dunks his head underwater because he doesn't want to hear his dad's rambling. But Mr. Uno mistakenly thinks that number one is trying to catch a fish that way for some reason. And eventually, though, Mr. Uno decides they need to play some music while they go fishing, so he brings out a portable radio and starts to play sousaphone music. Number one throws the portable radio into the lake saying that no one wants to hear tuba music. And Mr. Uno mistakenly thinks that number one means that everyone prefers to hear the sousaphone live. So Mr. Uno pulls out a sousaphone and he starts to play the sousaphone. Um, the dads that are present are enjoying the music, but the sons aren't enjoying it. Number one keeps trying to tell his dad to stop because he feels embarrassed, but Mr. Uno doesn't hear him. So eventually, number one snaps at his dad, and this causes Mr. Uno to stop. Number one and uh, Mr. Uno don't notice this right now, but um, there's a fish hook with a newspaper attached to it that's uh, um, being lowered from above. 
and the dads uh, nearby are are looking at the newspaper, and then the fish hook pulls pulls them up, and and this happens one at a time. So one by one, the other dads are getting pulled up by this mysterious fish hook, and while this is happening, number one is ranting to his dad about how he didn't want to waste his time going fishing with him when he could be hanging out with his friends instead and how he hates listening to the tuba music, not caring when Mr. Uno clarifies that it's sousaphone music. And after number one finishes his rant, Mr. Uno's face is actually revealed to us, the viewers, and he has a very sad look on his face. He apologizes to Nigel, saying that he only wanted to be friends with his son. Number one realizes he may have been uh, harsh with his... uh, Yeah, number one realizes he may have been needlessly harsh with his uh, venting, and he tries to um, clarify he didn't mean to be so harsh, but Mr. Uno sadly says he understands. Suddenly, the fish hook with the newspaper attached to it uh, appears in front of Mr. Uno, but when he goes to look at the newspaper, he's pulled up uh, wherever the fishing hook uh, is coming from, and number one is in despair, as he realizes his dad is gone now, and we do see the other sons uh, are in despair over their missing dads as well. Mr. Uno regains consciousness, and he's wondering where he is, but suddenly he's greeted by a boy, Willard Wallace, and Willard keeps referring to Mr. Uno as dad for some reason, much to Mr. Uno's confusion, and then we find out Willard was the one responsible yeah, Willard was the one responsible for the fish for the fishing rod that had a newspaper attached to the hook. And Willard points out um, the other dads that he caught, but he thinks that um, he thinks he'll have to return them to the lake because he thinks they aren't ideal dads. And they're in a giant bucket, and some of them are actually on the dock, and uh, they're flopping around like they're fish. So. Yeah, the dads are acting like fish, essentially, that have been caught from a lake, and or a body of water in general. And yes, a dock, that's right. Um, this dock is hanging above the uh, cliff that's near the lake. Or yeah, the cliff that's by the lake, um, this dock is hanging uh, from that cliff. And we do see Willard's house is on the cliff as well, not too far off from where the dock is. And Willard is impressed that Mr. Uno has a sousaphone with him, because apparently Willard likes the sousaphone as well. He pulls out his own sousaphone, and he wants to play a duet with uh, Mr. Uno, who, like I said before, he keeps calling him dad. And Mr. Uno thinks uh, that it sounds like a fun idea, so Mr. Uno and Willard proceed to play a sousaphone duet. Back at the lake on the boat, number one is sadly... um, Yeah, number one is sadly reflecting on how harsh he may have been with his dad, and he insists to himself that he and his dad can be friends. Suddenly, he hears the sousaphone music, and he realizes his dad is not far away at all. And number one activates uh, a rocket backpack, assuring his dad that he's coming to save him, and then he grumbles to himself about how he's going to save an adult. (laughs) So, Mr. Uno finishes the sousaphone duet with Willard, and Willard wants to do some more activities with Mr. Uno, but Mr. Uno politely responds that he should get back to his son, who might be worried about him. And Willard, though, says that he's been enjoying the quality time with him, but Mr. Uno politely responds that he would like to spend quality time with his actual son, Willard, however, does not take this well, insistent that Mr. Uno stay, and number one uh, arrives on the dock, and he's, uh, and uh, Mr. Uno is glad to see that his son has arrived, but Willard reveals a trap. Willard activates, um, yeah, there's a rope, um, a rope with, um, that's tied to have a, a, a circle, and it's around Mr. Uno's feet, so When Willard activates the trap, the rope tightens around Mr. Uno's feet and pulls him up. So Mr. Uno is now hanging upside down uh, from this rope. And Willard warns number one not to go any further or else he'll um, he'll, uh, let go of the rope 
uh, to send Mr. Uno falling back to the lake near some spiky rocks. Uh, number one demands to know what Willard wants. Willard says he wants uh, number one's dad, and he's willing to fight for him. Number one accepts the challenge, and he tells Willard to name the type of fight that they'll have. And Willard's idea of a fight? A sousaphone fight, although number one grumbles about it being a tuba battle. <laughs> and Willard um, insists that they begin the tuba fight. So, yes, uh, number one and Willard start to... Uh, play the sousaphone. At first, it's just them just sitting down, but then eventually they start to get more active as they do so. Like, they're walking around and trying to, um, yeah, they're walking around. Or And uh, Willard, in particular, actually does a handstand at one point, and he even manages to play the sousaphone without his hands at one point, too, even. So, despite number one's best efforts, though, eventually uh, he's, uh, he's not able to keep up, and Willard ends up winning. Willard uh, gloats about his victory. Number one apologizes to his dad for failing, but Mr. Uno responds that number one did his best, and he says that uh, the dad's um, do's and don'ts section of the newspaper mentions that uh, the son doing their best is what matters. Or yeah, um, the dad, yeah, the dad's uh, do's and don'ts section of the newspaper mentions that uh, the offspring of a dad doing their doing their best is all that really matters. Willard then says, "Number one will know how he feels now," because Willard uh, goes on a monologue about how he had to fish for dads and how he ended up with dads that were not as ideal and how he had to wait for so long to find an ideal dad and he says number one will know that misery now but then suddenly a voice calls out to willard and willard wonders is this really who he thinks it is and we see a man uh standing by uh willard's uh, house and uh the man clarifies yeah it's willard's dad mr wallace willard runs to his dad uh with tears of joy and hugs his dad, saying how he thought he'd never see him again. Mr. Wallace responds, though, he told Willard that he was just going to leave for 10 minutes to go get some milk. <laughs> then he notices the Uno duo and uh, the sousaphones, and Mr. Wallace complains about more tubas being present. But Mr. Uno and, surprisingly enough, number one clarify that they're sousaphones, not tubas. So the Uno duo have returned to the boat on the lake, and Mr. Uno says there's something important he needs to tell uh, Nigel. Nigel says, though, there's no need for them to say anything, but Mr. Uno insists it's important and it needs to be said now. And uh, what is that important thing? He thinks number one needs some sousaphone lessons. So the segment ends with number one grumbling to himself as Mr. Uno um, explains why he thinks number one's sousaphone performance was poor. So this segment could, yeah, this segment is explicitly a number one spotlight appearance, and uh, it is worth noting that number one is the only Kids Next Door operative, Sector V operative or otherwise, who is present in this uh, segment, and we also get to meet number one's dad, Mr. Uno. And Mr. Uno will go on to appear in future entries in the series. There's one entry in particular, actually, where Mr. Uno plays a very important role. That same entry also reveals Mr. Uno's first name. So I don't want to give that away just yet for anyone who's a new viewer or if they're um, or if they're just following along with these recap and thoughts videos. But you can be assured we will eventually cross that bridge and We'll go into greater detail about Mr. Uno um, as uh, we learn more about him in later entries. And uh, Mr. Uno is the first um, Sector V operative parent whose face is uh, revealed to the viewers. And like I said, um, uh, we will get to see the faces of most, if not all, of the Sector V operative parents eventually in the future. But Mr. Uno is the one who kickstarts um, the revelations of the Sector V operative parent uh, faces. Now, as for Mr. Uno's appearance here, this actually continues a trend that happened earlier in Season 2. And Tom Warburton had acknowledged on one of his blog posts that... Um, 
Although in season one, Tom Warburton was very insistent to um, the rest of the staff and crew that they not do uh, many, if any, uh, segments that feature school or home in season one. They wanted to focus more on the uh, Sector V operatives in the treehouse or off on missions. Uh, he, he felt that season two was the right time to go into greater detail about uh, the home element of the series. Now, to be fair, um, we did get uh, hints of the home element in season one. Uh, Mrs. Uno, number one's mom's voice, was heard off screen in Operation Cannon. And, um, and uh, that's right, number four's dad had appeared in Operation Office, although we went to where Mr. Beatles worked at rather than the Beatles' home. And then in Operation Tommy, we got to meet number two's younger brother, Tommy, and his mom, Mrs. Gilligan. And we actually did get to see a little bit of the Gilligan house, even though it wasn't the uh, main focus of that particular segment. So we did get hints of the home element of the series. We didn't get any school elements yet, but that's coming eventually. Um, not yet in this season, but eventually. So we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. But yes, um, Tom Warburton did feel that season two was the right time to focus on the home element of the series. And in that same blog post, Tom Warburton also said that um, he was looking for, I guess you could call it a central theme for season two, for him and the staff and crew members to follow for season two. And they ended up deciding on family being that uh, central theme or recurring element or recurring theme, whatever you want to call it. And that has been the case um, with what we've seen so far in season two, because in Operation Support, we met number five's older sister, Cree, and uh, her dad, Mr. Lincoln. Operation Tapioca introduced us to number two's maternal grandma, Lydia. And here, Operation Oompa, we meet Mr. Uno, uh, number one's uh, dad. And Mr. Uno, like I said earlier, is the first of the Sector V operative parents to have their face revealed to the viewers. And Mr. Uno is not the last Sector V operative relative that we're going to see in Season 2. We are going to meet another Sector V operative relative later on in Season 2 to continue this uh, recurring theme or central theme. So we'll cross that bridge when we eventually get to it. But yes, uh, yeah, uh, family was the, a central theme or recurring idea for Season 2. And Tom Warburton also mentioned in this uh, same blog post that with Operation Oompa in particular, he wanted to recreate, um, he wanted to recreate um, a dueling banjos, except uh, with um, dueling tubas. And yeah, he actually does say tuba rather than uh, sousaphone in this blog post. But yeah, if anyone was getting a dueling banjos vibe, uh, that was intentional, as Tom Warburton had clarified. And otherwise, um, yeah, Willard himself. Yeah, Willard's another kid antagonist, so we do see more of those shades of gray of how, while not all the adults are bad, not all of the kids are good either. And we already did get that before with uh, the delightful children from down the lane being the most prevalent example, and Big Brother was a kid villain as well. But Willard, yeah, Willard's not really an outright villain. He's more, I guess you could say he's a variation of the anti-villain type, because Willard's uh, motives were more sympathetic. He was just lonely for uh, his dad. Although, as we found out at the end of the segment, Willard's dad actually was just gone for 10 minutes just to pick up some milk. And uh, so, yeah, I guess you could say that's the typical over-the-top nature of the series. But in any case, I guess you could say it is heartwarming how Willard does love his dad. And it seems Mr. Wallace does care about his son, too, even if he's a little exasperated by his son's uh, uh, sousaphone interest in his over-the-top manner. And speaking of heartwarming, Mr. Uno wanting to spend quality time with number one actually takes on a whole new meaning of heartwarming when we do find out more about Mr. Uno's backstory. It actually uh, paints uh, Mr. Yeah, it, yeah, it's already heartwarming that Mr. Uno wants to spend time with his son, but once we learn his backstory, Mr. Uno's motives become that much more heartwarming. 
even if Mr. Uno might not fully remember certain details about his past. I don't want to give too much away for those who don't know what I'm talking about, but if you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. But yes, you can be assured we'll go into greater detail about that later. So otherwise, I would say that's about what we can say for this segment. It was a bit more to say, but it did cover a lot of significant details. And like I said, it was nice to have a number one spotlight appearance uh, where we got to focus solely on Nigel Uno and uh, his dad. Uh, we got to meet uh, Mr. Uno. And and yeah, it was there were definitely some heartwarming moments there where number where yeah, Mr. Uno wanted to spend time with his son. And number one, kind of realized that his dad's intentions are good about wanting to spend time with him. And number one came around and he did regret uh, his rather harsh um, reaction to it. And he was still willing to save his dad, which was really heartwarming. And yeah, Willard was actually a pretty sympathetic antagonist himself, if a little, uh, while still keeping up the over-the-top hamminess that some of the antagonists in the series are known for. But otherwise, yeah, I believe that's about it for this segment. So as of this video, we've now discussed the B segment of episode 18 of Codename Kids Next Door on this channel. Take care and until next time.